Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you'd like to email me, my name is Beth Gay Freeman, and this is my email address. Email me anytime. And I do a publication called Beth's Newfangled Family Tree. And if you'd not like to read that, all you have to do is go to this address uh, on electricscotland.com. It's free. There's no charge. And there are no strings. I thought today we'd just talk some more about genealogy. And, you know, there's Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law... Uh, seems to follow me around a lot, but there are also Murphy's Laws for genealogists, and these are Murphy's Laws for genealogists. All assumptions are meaningless. Everything will take longer than you think. Any effort to achieve clarity will generate confusion. Research effort expands to consume all available time, space, money, and effort. Don't believe in miracles. Mm -mm. You just rely on them. Research which depends on human reliability is unreliable. When things seem to be getting better, you have just overlooked something. Progress is the exchange of one unknown for two unknowns. An ounce of hypothesis is worth a pound of research. The last pages of notes which are thrown away are the next notes that you need. Every family tree has its own sap. To err is human. To really foul things up, oh boy, you need to have a computer. And your great-grandfather's obituary states that he died leaving no issue. Yikes. I always think when I talk about genealogy about the college professor who asked his senior class how many of them had relatives back in the 15th century. They all just sat there. And of course, you know and I know that everybody has relatives way further back than the 15th century, back and back and back and back. And without even one of the relatives you have to have, you would not exist. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How big is your family tree? The answer to this question depends on exactly what you mean. Do you mean all of your direct ancestors, your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, etc.? Or do you mean all of your ancestors' descendants? your cousins, no matter how distant they are related to you. The type of family tree most people research is called an ascending genealogy, which traces parents. The second type, which includes all of the descendants of one or more of your ancestors, is called a descending genealogy, and it lists all of your uncles and aunts, great uncles and aunts, etc., and their children, who are your first, second, third, fourth, da 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 cousins. Now, here is the shocker. Hold on to your seat. Sit down if you're standing up. Whether you like it or not, your descending family tree contains over 5 billion, that's with a B, billion living people. That's right. It includes every bit, all of humanity. In fact, were it not for physical barriers like oceans and mountains, etc., and cultural barriers over the centuries, the furthest any two isolated persons now living on this planet could be related would be about 30th cousins. This means that somewhere in our ancestry by the 32nd generation, we have a common pair of ancestors. But because of those barriers and other factors, there is a statistically compensated uh, for by extending it to 20 additional generations. Thus, the furthest any two living persons on this planet can be related is 50th cousins. 
This means that anyone has a common pair of ancestors back 1500 years ago, about the 4th century AD. This also means the most isolated Australian Aborigine and the most isolated African natives are no more than 50th cousins to each other. If you and that other person with European ancestry could identify every one of your direct ancestors, you would statistically find a common pair of parents by the time you reached your 17th generation. That's about 500 years ago, just about the time Columbus set sail for America. The family trees of all of us, no matter where the origin is, where no matter whatever anything is, it meets and merges into one genetic tree of all humanity by the time they have spread into the 50th generation. The average person has about one million direct ancestors with some thousand surnames in just the last 500 years, and it is impossible to trace most, trace most of them that far back because of the early lack of records. If you don't believe me, consider this. Assume that none of your ancestors are related to each other. That would mean that in your 15th generation back, you would have 32,768 individual ancestors, no duplications. In your 10th generation, you only had 1,024 ancestors. But in your 30th generation, about 400 years ago, you would have over 1,127,000 direct ancestors. And that's a period when it is estimated that the entire world population was less than half a billion. Case closed. The known descendants of the Mayflower of Plymouth, Massachusetts were listed in a published book. According to this book, they can hardly even begin to track down each and every living person who had direct answers, uh, ancestors on this famous vessel. Do the increasing uh, homogeneity of people today, the entire world population will be able to claim ancestors on the Mayflower in the next four centuries. Aren't you glad you don't have to send Christmas cards and birthday cards to everybody? Thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you'll join us next week. Thanks. Ta-da!